Hello everybody, welcome to the Tube, a lot going on, here's our lineup. Why did the French police arrest two top Uber executives in Paris? What's the deal behind Microsoft and AOL's latest cooperation? How is Shazam planning to capture Apple's music new wave? Which holy grail is this Israeli startup planning to give Hollywood? And why, oh why, is Sony betting on online video stars? Why? All the questions, some answers. Let's go. Yesterday, we reported about the Uber fiasco in France as taxi drivers demonstrated against the successful app throughout the weekend. Now, after the riots, there are first arrests, and it's not who you think. Two top Uber executives were taken into custody in Paris on Monday as part of a government probe into the ride-hailing service. Although reportedly unrelated, the incident took place after violent taxi protests against Uber and similar services services in the country's capital last week. Thaibo Simpal, general manager for Uber France, and Pierre Dimitri Gorkoti, general manager for Uber Western Europe, were taken into custody during a hearing with French police, investigating them for operating an illegal taxi service. Uber released this statement, We are always happy to answer questions the authorities have about our service and look forward to resolving these issues. Sure you are. Microsoft are skimming it down. The giant from Seattle is looking to exit the web advertising business, according to a report by the Wall Street Journal, a move that would cost 1,200 jobs. The advertising assets and operations, like the ones now on your screen, would be sold to AOL. All of Microsoft's 1,200 advertising employees will receive offer letters to join AOL as well, so that's nice. As part of this deal, AOL will use Bing instead of Google to power its search results and search advertising throughout its properties for the next 10 years. The shift is believed to be part of CEO Satya Nadella's plan to run Microsoft's various divisions into three primary areas, personal computers, the cloud, and enterprise. Good luck. You wrote a script for a new action movie. Your mother loved it, and your cat thinks you're a genius. But does it really have a chance to become a blockbuster? How much money should you invest in your movie, and who will ever want to see it? A new Israeli startup called Vault claims it knows to do exactly that, an ability dreamt about by many for years, predicting whether a specific movie idea, casting, or financing will lead it to be a hit or a flop. Vault software is programmed to detect the genre of the film, what markets can it go to, and predict its success. But should we give the machine so much power to decide which movies should we produce? Let's talk to David Stiff, CEO of Vault, and gaze into the future. Good evening. Good evening. So let's try to get it straight. What exactly does Vault do? Well, the best way to think about Vault, in essence, is that it's an audience location tool. So it takes a piece of content, and understands if this content, like a screenplay, has an audience, okay? We use something called machine learning. It's mm -hmm. a part of artificial intelligence. Uh, we then put the screenplay through the system, and we extract many, many different story features. So themes, genres, characters, uh, the relationships between different characters, whether there's levels of sex or violence. And from that, we're able to give a prediction on box office, on whether to produce or not, on casting, on marketing. We know the word prediction sounds kind of science fiction to me. How right. accurate can Vault uh, uh, predictions be? So nothing's ever 100% in this world, but we work with statistics. So our statistics and our prediction rate is around 70%. Mm -hmm. And why is that significant? It's because Hollywood, as we know, don't produce hits after hit after hit after hit. So they're producing at around 40, 50%. That's their prediction rate. Uh, at the moment, and that's for the major top studios. So when you say statistic, you mean you look at all the movies that were produced and then you analyze which ones were successful and use it as big data, is that the thing? Yeah, something like that. Basically, if you want to say and look at, look at Sony and how we predict against Sony, we take Sony, all the movies they did for, say, the last 10 years, we take that out of, their, out of our system, and then we'd refeed Vault all the screenplays as if it was a CEO of Sony for that time. And then you get to understand what's the prediction level. The great thing about Vault is it produces far less movies and makes a greater profit. 
that's what it does great. You know, even in Hollywood, which is, you know, a moneymaker after all, uh, you have this thing that it's supposed to be art. And with art, you have that thing, that unexplainable thing that makes magic happen or not. How can a, an algorithm predict magic? Yeah, absolutely. Basically, I come from a film background and a, and a writing background, so I wanted to infuse writing and the ability to be creative and, and you know, be spontaneous and have actors be able to do what they want to do and directors be able to, you know, direct from their heart. So what we, we, we did was we created a system under one encompassing rule, okay? That is, we maximise creativity. So what we do is, all we say is yes or no and give predictions before the fact. All right, so once that's done, we stay out of it. We don't want to give creative insights. We don't want to tell people they should do this or shouldn't do that. We just want to give them that peace of mind that this is going to hit months, years, decades even in advance. Okay, and where's human intuition in all this? So human intuition is, you know, the actors if they want to if they want to be, you know, spontaneous on set, they want to take their character to a different different place, they can totally do that. If you're a director and you want to, you know, uh, really embrace one of the themes of your projects, go ahead do it. Be creative as you want. We're not going to say don't do any of that kind of thing. But in your in your best dreams, you are the number one uh, software in uh, Hollywood. Every yeah. all the big studios use you before they even waste time on reading scripts. Yeah. And some scripts will never get to be read by a human because Vault says it ain't gonna make it. That that's one way of looking at it. We we'd like to think that it would be a dual process where it goes through a system and our system and we, we take we take the script apart and try to understand if it will work or not. But there will, always will be a human element to it, reading, checking over and making sure that, you know, the themes are there, you know, the system can't predict so well themes yet. So if we take something like Independence Day, which has a huge theme of hope, maybe the machine might not be able to, uh, to pick that up. So you do need humans in there giving their, their inputs as well. It's a dual process. You know, transporting with big data is, uh, is, is a hot topic now in the business world. Um, you know, I'm imagining uh, people trying to understand which song would become a hit, which movie would yeah. become a hit, etc. What's Vault's edge on the comp uh, competition, on the competitors? So right now, there aren't that many people in this space. We're very lucky because we come at a time where big data and machine learning has become possible due to the fact that you have Amazon cloud services, very, very cheap compute power. So that's our added value. We've come at a great time. Right now, you're seeing a huge shift from tech companies coming into the space. So you see like uh, Alibaba is now, they just bought a big, uh, a big investment in, in, you know, in video and media in, in China. Mm -hmm. You have uh, Netflix doing what they're doing with machine learning. Then you have Amazon, you know, embracing their, their tech backgrounds to bring these sort of things. So it's to, still to on you, you say. And now, sh uh, shortly, can your system be used uh, for prediction in other fields of entertainment or lifestyle? Yeah, absolutely. We want to move to television. We want to move to publishing. We want to move to maybe news one day. So you never, you'll never know where we can be. What we've been able to do is break down content and be able to give a prediction. So wherever content is, that's where we'll be. Cool. Thank you very much. Good Thanks luck. Thanks a lot. Cheers. OK, we're moving on. Ahead of Apple Music's official launch, Shazam announced that it is rolling out a big new feature that lets fans see what their favorite musicians are Shazamming. Shazam lets people identify songs, t uh, TV shows, and movies by capturing a brief snippet onto their phone, which gets matched against Shazam's vast database. The new version, out Tuesday for iOS and Android, lets users see what songs have been identified by artists using the app. And and because not even musicians know every song that's playing, more than 30 artists will have profile places initially, including Alicia Keys, Coldplay, Shakira Shakira, and Usher. If you want to hear the song right away, you will be directed to the song in Apple's new music service. Here is a peek into Shazam's brave new world. We like Shazam. Stars on the pavement, California dreams. Looked up through the bright lights, no stars that I see. You said it's all yours if you take it there. I said I can't do it alone. I swear. You said it's all yours, it's all yours when you smile.
Back in the day, when trying to learn a new instrument, you would usually have to seek out a teacher and, well, attend classes. But with the magic of technology, lessons and teachers are now part of the instrument. This is where the one smart piano comes into play. Made by one musical group, the instrument can connect to your iOS devices and become the world's first real smart piano. Users are able to browse sheet music within the accompanying app and learn how to play those songs right off the bat. LED lights embedded into the instruments show which keys the player should press and they are good to go. The company already sold 700,000 devices in China and is now seeking global expansion through a crowdfunding campaign. Here's their pitch. There's a reason why most people end up quitting music lessons or never even get started. Even when you're taking lessons, it can take years before you start learning your favorite songs. And honestly, practicing alone just isn't fun sometimes. That's why we're bringing you the One Smart Piano. It'll teach you to play without a teacher, at your own pace, and in the convenience of your own home. We've taken mobile technology through your phone or your tablet and combined that with our Smart Piano. And she's doing the great too. Through interactive sheet music guidance, video lessons, and games, we're bringing you a new way to learn piano that's fun and motivating. The magic starts when you connect your mobile device to the piano. Wow, I wish it's not too expensive. It looks super cool and useful. As social video continues to grow in power, reach, and influence, brands are still trying different ways to use each platform's biggest names as a marketing tool. So far, without impressive results. For its new wearable camera, Sony enlisted Vine star Zach King, the wizard of camera and editing effects, for a new campaign launching on National Camera Day. Yes, there's a US National Camera Day now. Invisible Man tries to pick up on the fun of quick visual illusion that plays so well on Zach King's Vine, whose star is really rising recently with a video he made for Red Bull, and he even made a trick for ABC's Academy Award. Anyway, here is his Sony contribution. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> The new GTA Studio that comes with GTA 5 already brought us many sorts of user-made movies and parodies, but we never thought we'll see the intro of 90s sitcom classic Full House on GTA while well, dreams can come true. The milkman, the paper boy, evening TV. Did I get delivered here? Somebody tell me, please. This old world confusing me. Clouds as mean as you've ever seen. In a bird, he knows you're true. Then a little voice inside you whispers. And it's time once again for another segment from one of the internet's most successful shows, Tiny Hamster. Remember how cute he was when he ate a burrito? This time he's having a 4th of July barbecue. God bless America. <laughs>
yeah, it started cute and then became really weird. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with a brand new show, i24news.tv. And always remember, hip hop was super exotic to us in Canada. That's Nelly Fortado. She said what? That's what she said. Goodbye. See you tomorrow.